What's up, guys? It is Christmas Eve. Oh, I'm so excited. We have so much stuff planned for you. My name is Andrew, and my co host, Sam, um, he seems to be running a little bit late, but it's okay. This is so very you know what? This is exactly like him. That, you know what? Never mind. It's exciting. It's Christmas. In fact, this year we are talking about an adventure, an advent, an adventurous Christmas. See what I did there? See? He's still not here. Okay. How many of you have an advent calendar at home? You know, we've been going through one. It's probably similar to the one that you have at home, the one that we've done together. Um, it probably helps you count the days down to Christmas, and it's fun, right? Well, that's what Advent is all about. It's about waiting. It's, it's the time leading up to Christmas that helps us get excited about the most incredible gift ever that anyone has ever given. So I hope you're all ready to celebrate this amazing gift because Christmas is the time of year when I can say confidently and boldly that every human in the world can know there is no hope. Uh, cor wait, what? What is going? Sam, what are you doing? It is I, Sir Reginald uh, Fastidious the Third, the greatest one-man Shakespearean Bible story reenactor, uh, and I am here so that you may enjoy my presence and know that this Christmas there is no hope. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, no, no. All hope is not lost. No. Yes, it is. No. Yes. No. Yes. No, it's not. Yes. Oh. Sam. Ah. You do do you see? I punched myself oh. in the nose. See, even my own appendages <sighs> rage war Sam. against me. Sam, unlike you, I actually believe there is a lot of hope to be had, especially... Around Christmas. Really? What year have you been living in, sir? Okay, okay. I admit, the year had a lot of ups and downs and and downs. <laughs> but when we look at Christmas, we, can, we can't we can help but have hope. That's not what the Bible says. What are you talking about? <laughs> Surprised I've been reading the Bible, I see. <laughs> well, after performing it for ten years, ten, I finally decided to actually read it. And I was... Appalled and oh, okay. Anyways, behold, I'm the bearer of bad tidings during this happy season, and I'm prepared for the worst. Oh, what? and within my mind, I have prepared a perfect narration and a performance piece to go over it all. Like art? This is performance. Ah. Uh. Thusly. So, I, like, what am I supposed to do? You just tell the story, right, of the Bible, and I will perform it. So, right, okay, so... Yes. I'll, you do what you do. Yes, you did get my email, right? Anyways, we'll go with it precisely, and I will perform this art piece thusly. Okay, okay, so... Okay. I know you're here to celebrate Christmas, but I find that when Samuel shows up... It's just best to let him do what he does, do his thing, and then he just leaves quickly. All right? I've prepared sufficiently, and I'm now ready to grace the stage. Oh, great. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to be reading off the screen back here, guys. That's where I'm looking. All right, here we go. In the beginning, God created the universe and all that is in it, including our home, Earth. It is good. But don't get used to it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. God didn't say that last part. Then God created the first human, Adam. Oh, yeah. But Adam. God took one of Adam's ribs. Let me get that. Oh, that's going to hurt. Oh. To make the first woman, Eve. All right, you know that song, the, the baby back ribs? Because it's like, I got your Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back, Adam's back. I got your Adam's back, Adam's back. Okay. That was good, good. That was good. God gave Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden, and life 
was good. Smooth. However. Mm. However. Mm. However. Mm. However, Adam and Eve broke the only rule God gave them. They took the fruit from the special tree in the garden and <sighs> ate it. Well, I've fallen. We can't get up. It was at this moment the world became broken. Sin entered the world and people were separated from God. After that, things kept getting worse. God called an old man named Abraham. Yes, Lord. And promised him he would have as many children as there were stars in the heavens. Oh, what? How do you expect me to pay for college? There's no hope. God's promise came true, but all of Abraham's descendants, the Israelites, were enslaved by the Egyptians. Abraham's descendants cried out to God to save them. So, God spoke to a man named Moses. Hey, Moses! <coughs> through a burning bush. And told Moses he would convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. God sent terrible plagues like frogs. Frogs! <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually, Pharaoh let God's people go, and Moses led them to, to safety by walking through the Red Sea. But the Israelites disobeyed God. So they couldn't enter the land God promised them for 40 years. That's long. There's no hope. And then they were ruled by bad kings. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and the Israelites were conquered by the Babylonians. No hope for you! And... It's seen! Thank you! Wait, what? Thank you! And that's the Bible! Merry Christmas! There's no hope! And I soon left thusly. Wait, 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 Samuel. What? No. Yes. no. 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 Look, listen. First of all, there are tons of stories that you skipped over in the Old Testament that are filled with hope and joy and peace and love. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. Listen, the Bible is an amazing story of God's love for us. R really, it really is. Yes, it starts off a mess, I'll give you that, but God had a plan to fix it right <clears throat> from the start. Really? Yes. So you want to tell me about that? Yeah, like, yeah, like we were just talking about, there's lots going on. In God's big story. Sin, failure, hard times, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yes, wasn't that the point of everything I just did? Well, yes, but there's more. You see, there is a solution. That's what this Christmas is about. You see, Christmas is about Jesus, and he brings us several things. The first is hope. Hope, like the Star Wars movie? Which one is the fourth? A new, well, you know? well, kind of. I've, I've brought some people to help. Um, so, we're going to get JD to come in and help explain oh. hope to us. So, we'll be right back. Okay, so that'll be good. So, I have JD here, and she's going to read Isaiah 9, 6 through 7 for us and teach us about hope. All right, guys, here we go. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor, David, for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Now, Isaiah knew these things weren't going well for most people. He knew that they needed to see that God had a bigger plan, that God had promised to send us the greatest repair person to all uh, of all to fix our broken world. The King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the greatest doctor, God's rescuer, will be all of those things. The candle represents hope. That's so cool. You see, Samuel, that's hope. Where's Samuel at, JD? I, I thought he was supposed I'm to... Yeah. <laughs> there he is. See? I promise I was watching from the back. Okay, Sam, so that's, that's hope. 
God's promised a gift and he delivered. I mean, How awesome is that? It's cool and all, but I've hoped for many things before. Like that one guy who said he turned me into a star only what? to find out he used me for some humiliating cereal ad. <laughs> well then, let, you know what, JD, can you, can you come back, please? Sam needs to have a moment. Let's bring JD back and have her read about what else Jesus brings, which is joy. So JD's going to read all about that for us. All right. Hey, guys. So Luke shares an amazing story about Jesus' mom, Mary. She was just an extraordinary everyday girl until something totally unexpected happened. So let's read Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. All right. Uh, let, me, let me find it here. Uh-oh. I'm going to draw it. Luke 1, 26. There it is. All right. So in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favorite woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the, ba so the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. That's so cool. Yeah, I I've lived through some fantastic Christmases. And I've lived through Christmas seasons that weren't quite what anyone expected. Mm -hmm. But no matter what this season looks like for you or your family, you can find joy. Real joy. I know that doesn't make sense, but it's true. And even when things seem like they will never be quite right, you can trust what God is working it out and that he loves you so much. And he won't leave you in the middle of the mess for very long. So we've got hope so far. And we've got joy, right? Okay, so kids, I want you to do something. I want you to take a look at your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, and really whoever's around. And all right, so this is the secret. They have trouble remembering what the world was like without you. It's true. Their life is completely different because you are here, and they wouldn't change that for, for any amount of money in the world. Now, keep staring at them while we tell you the next word that Jesus brings. Love. Jesus brings love. And J.D. is here to discuss what love means this Christmas. Now, Christmas is about, well, a kid, a baby, the greatest gift ever. And I will tell you all about it as it is recorded by Luke. All right, so I'm going to read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Now, at that time of the, the Roman Emperor, Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This is the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned, all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, uh, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiance, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no lodging available for them. Now babies, babies change things, but the baby we celebrate at Christmas changed everything for everyone everywhere the love shown by the son of god leaving heaven and becoming one of us is more than any of us can imagine love does that every single time 
It's bigger and more fantastic than our mind or heart can hold. This Christmas, I pray that love is a huge part of everything you do, everything you give, and everything you feel. Mm, so good. Thank you, JD. Mm -hmm. So, we've done hope, we've done joy, we've done love, and now we're going to reveal the fourth word to you. Are you ready? Oh, actually, I think I need a nap. Wait, what? Sam? What is what is happening? What are you? It's not time for a nap. Sorry, like you know those melatonin We're in the middle. I yes, I, I know the melatonin. One thing. or seven. No, Sam. Do you do you need a break? Yeah. Like, I'll go sit over here and I'll listen to what you've got next time. You're not supposed to take seven melatonin, <sighs> Sam. Okay, we'll we'll be right back. Well. Sam is definitely relaxed. I don't know how he got into those melatonins, but he did. Okay, so being relaxed is sometimes hard to do, especially this time of the year between traffic and Christmas parties and all the noise and the busyness. It can all be, well, very un-Christmassy. But still, there's something going on under, under it all that leads to our very next word. And I, I want to bring JD back out here to join me as we discover something else that's at the heart of the good news about Christmas. And once again, this was recorded by Luke. And JD is going to read to us from Luke chapter 2, 8 through 20. All right, here we go. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast, of, vast host of others the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone, what had happened, and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flock and glorifying, praising, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Mm. Peace. Even just saying the word can lower the tension, can't it? Oh, peace. Right. But peace is far bigger than just a relaxing breath. Mm. It's a peace between us and God. And peace just represents the idea that God loves us. And God has made a way for you to live with him forever. He isn't disappointing you. He isn't angry with you. Because Jesus came to earth on a mission. God is at peace with me and you. Mm. Now, Jesus, I mean, not Jesus, but Christmas... It's so many things to so many different people. Um, Jesus Christ has come to save us all. He gave us hope, joy, peace, and love. So bringing those things, those beautiful things together, just for so many people, all, all time, for all places and all cultures, it, it should look a little different. Yeah. And Christmas is only possible because our journey always takes us to it, it just points us back to Jesus, and this is Christmas is all about Jesus. So Jesus is the one who gave his life for us. He's the one who rose again and lives today. He's the one who will come back again, no matter what Christmas looks like at your house, no matter if you have a real tree or an artificial tree or no tree at all, no matter if you dress up or stay in your pajamas or wear that ugly coarseness sweater. 
No matter if you have dinner out of a can or at your grandma's or with a new neighbor, no matter what, Jesus wants to be the center of everything that you do. When we keep him at the most important thing about Christmas, and every single other day, we understand real hope and joy and love and peace. So not just Christmas, but all the time. For sure. So Jesus shines so bright in our lives that it helps us put everything else in right light. Like This is the greatest gift ever. It was the first gift of Christmas, like the very first one. And it will be the greatest gift that has ever been given, ever, forever. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Sam, he's a... What? Oh, did I miss that? Uh, I'm sorry. You just ran JD off. I'm so sorry, JD. But you listen. You know what? You seem to be awake now. I did. I took a power nap. It was amazing. You should try it. Um, Okay. I'm ready to party now. Okay. Well, you you know what? You know, you know what to do. I do know what to do. I gotta say, that was a lot. Okay. That was a lot to take in. What words did you get out of this? Well. I think the biggest one was Jesus at the end. Woke up just in time to catch that tail end, and I think you're right. So wait, what is Christmas all about, Sam? What? It- <sighs> well, you see, I thought there was no hope. I thought everything was a bummer, but I guess I forgot to turn that last page in the Old Testament and look at the new hope that Jesus brings. So, yeah. so there's hope. Yeah, there and is. And there's hope. joy. Mm-hmm. And there's love. Yep. And there's peace. And peace. Man, there's Jesus. Gives us and offers us so much. Yeah. I hope that you have enjoyed this Christmas. You know what? I think I will. Last little bit. It's going to be good. Until then. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye, guys.